Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and privilege to be among such a distinguished group of friends and colleagues. I thank the Observer Research Foundation and the Ministry of External Affairs for bringing such an illustrious group together and for offering me the opportunity to speak here. Let's take a solemn moment to spend to send prayers to the souls of the 176 Afghans, Canadians, Swedes, Iranians, Ukrainians, British, and Germans who perished in the disaster that befell the Ukrainian airline flight 752. Among the Afghan victims were a couple who had just celebrated their wedding and were embarking on their happily ever after, a shared life that never came to be. As reflected in the panels and speeches of this conference, it's clear that our world is susceptible to sudden events that can produce volatility, risk, and uncertainty. What this requires is the exercise of prudence, restraint, and the recognition of common interests upon which we can build alliances and common policies. But it also requires a certain creative optimism. Where there is a challenge, there is also an opportunity. The Lebanese thinker philosopher Nicholas Taleb had a term for entities that gain strength from adversity, anti-fragile. He said that the anti-fragile gains from disorder. The events of recent weeks require the global community to recognize and recommit to the principles of de-escalation, peaceful resolution of conflict, neighborliness, and responsible statehood. We can grow stronger from the current disorder by adhering to these tried and true principles. In Afghanistan, we have urged our neighbors and partners to seek peaceful resolution to violent circumstances. Not just because our own national interests require it, but because these principles are enshrined in the UN Charter and they have been the basis of international committee for generations. We have learned a lot as a nation over the past four decades about what there is to lose from disorder. We did not do so well in learning how well to gain from it. Over the past 40 years, Afghanistan was never able to achieve the anti-fragile. We were never able to grow from disorder. We only sunk deeper into it. We, we were never able to overcome the influence of regional and global powers who sought to use our people in our geographical platform to further their own agendas. We were never able to harness the strength of our own diversity. We were never able to take advantage of our geopolitical positioning in this world, turning into a blessing rather than a curse. But those days are long gone. Things have been changing over the past few years for the better. Those of us who were born into war and displacement see things differently. We're not sinister about the possibility of peace. We're not jaded about Afghanistan's ability to tap into its economic potential and thrive. And we're not placing bets on the viability of our political structures. We're determined to create opportunity from the midst of uncertainty and move forward in progress, no matter how cluttered the path forward may be, with obstacles of threats and risks. And we are now seeing the fruits of our labors and the vindication of our belief in Afghanistan, particularly in the areas of peace, regional cooperation, and security. First and foremost, 
peace in our land is long overdue. People still long to see a day where they can send their children to school and visit friends without the persistent fear that they might be the target of a terrorist attack. Peace for our people mean the end of violence. This is why we insist that a ceasefire is necessary to create a conducive environment for talks. Violence and terrorism have no constituency in Afghanistan. Peace and democracy do. A ceasefire is a catalyst for sustainable peace because the Afghan people earnestly want it. And it will prove to the Afghan people and government that our enemies are not only serious about peace, but that it is within their control to maintain their part of a future deal. As our efforts toward peace gain momentum, we must have the cooperation and support of our neighbors and partners for peace to be sustainable. In these trying times for the global community, Afghanistan offers the rare opportunity for shared action. Our national quest for peace is beneficial to the region and to the world. As a frontline state in the war on terror, our success produces a global common good. This is both a starting point for cooperation and a common platform to unite around. But let there be no confusion about one thing. In the same way that there is an open heart for peace, there is a steely resolve against violence. There is no victory for violence and terrorism. The Afghan nation stands resolutely against it. The Afghan security forces have demonstrated this resolve. They are now better prepared than ever to take on our adversaries. The world witnessed how our forces secured the presidential election, creating the enabling conditions so the Afghan people could once again reinstate their belief in our republic and democracy. After a successful electoral process, our independent electoral bodies have finished tallying the votes, announced the preliminary results, and are now addressing reports of irregularities in line with the process laid out by the electoral law. As we await final results, we laud them for their tireless work to strengthen democracy in our country. Over the past few months, our brave security forces carried out successful operations across the country, beating back our enemies in clearing territory long under their reign of terror. They cleared eight districts from enemy control, taking the fight to the enemy and reversing a situation where the Taliban had military momentum. Through offensive operations, they have nearly obliterated ISIS in our eastern provinces, where they had terrorized the population there for years. As a result of pressure from our security forces, more than 600 ISIS fighters have surrendered, their bases are cleared, and their hideouts emptied. Communities in these areas long oppressed and brutalized are now returning to their former way of life, growing crops and nurturing their families. Our government is offering assistance as they rebuild their lives. Let the progress of our security forces be a call to those fighting to subvert our democracy and undermine our institutions. The Afghan people and government stand ready to engage in peace talks. But if you refuse to answer this call, prepare to face the full force of the Afghan nation. Ladies and gentlemen, in the midst of conflict, 
all of these competing priorities, we have focused heavily on economic development. As per President Ghani's vision, we are transforming Afghanistan from a landlocked country to a land bridged country. A crossroads of, region, of regional trade and connectivity. Our initiatives such as the Lapis Lazuri Corridor and Air Freight Corridors are already paying economic dividends, opening new frontiers for trade and the movement of goods, people and ideas throughout South and Central Asia. Large transnational energy, trade and transport projects spearheaded by Afghanistan are finally taking shape across regional borders to our collective advantage. With India alone, we have more than tripled our trade volume since 2015. After opening up the air corridors and improving bilateral cooperation. This is only the beginning of a vast potential. We hope that these and many more projects will continue to play a defining role in enhancing the economic prospects of our country as we look toward the beginning of a platform for multilateral cooperation where our success benefits the region and the world. We have achieved this progress over the past five years in no small part due to the commitment and generosity of our allies and partners. India has been one such key partner that has been able to recognize and share our creative vision for a secure, peaceful, and prosperous Afghanistan. The assistance extended by India to train our officers, provide needed military equipment, and educate our youth at quality universities has been essential. India has assisted in helping us build critical water, agricultural, health, and governance infrastructure. This type of creative assistance in what Afghanistan needs to move forward, not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of India and the region. As India celebrates its Army Day, we stand in recognition of this great country's important role in the world and the contributions of its army to peacekeeping, humanitarian support, and defense of common human values. At this time, I would also like to extend our thoughts and support to Australia, where brave firefighters and volunteers have been battling catastrophic fires across the country. While we take courage and inspiration from their sacrifices, we also pause and reflect on the devastating impact that climate change is bringing upon our environment and potentially the human race. Like Australia, Afghanistan is going through a drought that has threatened the livelihoods of our farmers and their families. Afghanistan's sustainable development goals are a recognition of the dire need for sustainable development practices that ensure humanity's future. We take note of the efforts made in Madrid last December during COP25 and retain the earnest hope that the remaining obstacles can be resolved this year. Climate change and its effect on our country is forcing us to think creatively about how to protect, harness, and maximize our natural resources, particularly our vast water resources, for which, which for years have been exploited and out of our control. So again, we're forcing ourselves to think optimistically and creatively about how to create an advantage out of a circumstance that have in the past left us fragile and vulnerable. Ladies and gentlemen, Afghanistan embarks on this new year having made steady progress in security, democracy, and peace. We continue to focus on maintaining an offensive posture in the battlefield and improving the readiness of our troops, who are in the lead in the battlefield not only for Afghan security, 
but regional and global security. Yet in the midst of conflict, we continue to think positively and creatively, making progress toward economic self-reliance, particularly via regional platforms and through regional cooperation. We continue to passionately yet practically pursue peace, which is the priority of the Afghan people and the government. We look to this year with hope, yet we are realistic about the uncertainty and volatility that seems likely to continue to define our times. We are not deterred. We Afghans are not looking inward and in retreating from this uncertainty. We are focused and forced to embrace it in the hopes that Afghanistan can too become the anti-fragile. The nation state that learns how, after 40 years of perpetual conflict, to grow stronger within the disorder that surrounds us. We Afghans are taking a risk despite the uncertainty. We're taking a risk to pursue peace, to strengthen democracy, to create, create cross-border economic opportunities, to strengthen our security. We're taking this risk because we have no other choice. But we're embracing this risk because we are united in our belief in the strong will of the Afghan people to achieve peace, to protect our democracy, and to keep progressing. We invite our neighbors and international partners to embrace this risk taking with us to continue our joint efforts towards peace, global security, and regional prosperity. Thank you.